Throughout the world, there are over 700,000 hotels in existence. Obviously, these hotels vary in quality, but across the entire industry, there are some things that hotels would rather you not know about. And some of that you definitely should know. From hygiene to freebies, here are 10 of the best kept secrets that hotels don't want you to know about. Our home away from home can never be perfect, but sometimes hotels really miss the mark on even coming close. So, what aren't they telling us? What secrets lie within the many walls of the hundreds of thousands of hotels throughout the world? Let's check in on these secrets, shall we? What happens when someone dies? Have you ever seen a body bag being moved around the hotel because someone just died? Or an ambulance waiting outside to take a body away? Probably not, and there's a reason for that. An interesting secret of hotels is how they deal with death. Of course, it happens. It shouldn't come as a shock that people die in their rooms all the time. But how do they deal with the body? The answer is simple, covertly. Hotels are well-trained and connected. The ambulances know where to meet them for transport, and staff carry the body down concealed halls and out the back to the ambulance in a body bag. They're trained in the art of ensuring nobody knows what happened in the room. Then, after disposing of the body, they act as if nothing happened and get that room back up and running, ready for the next guest in 48 hours. Checking in and out. If you've ever been to a hotel and overstayed your welcome, then you're likely fully aware of the penalty fee that comes with staying later than the checkout times. Well, what if we told you that a cost can also apply to checking in too early? Yep, you heard that right. While the old saying, the early bird catches the worm, is usually a good thing, it's not the case when it comes to hotel check-ins. This cost of early check-in isn't monetary though, it's far worse. If rooms have opened up and are ready for occupation, you'll be checked in, that seems fine, right? Wrong. The problem exists more with the quality of rooms you receive when you check in early. Most guests might not have checked out yet, so the rooms haven't been vacated or cleaned. Furthermore, the vacated rooms are likely not clean yet, leaving you with bottom tier rooms. Hotels regularly fill the nicest rooms first and then go from there to fill out the most desirable rooms before landing on what's left behind. While almost all rooms are charged the same amount, their experience can be vastly different. So if you want a nice view or something on a higher floor or away from noisy ice machines and elevators, be early by all means, just don't check in. The best time to check into a hotel? Sundays, why? because holiday guests are leaving and business guests have yet to arrive. It's the perfect time to get an awesome room. Are you going to stay the night? Planning on spending the night and only one night? Well, be prepared for what might happen if the hotel finds itself overbooked. This is a truly common practice, but considering 10% of booked guests never show up for their bookings daily, hotels make sure to book the place up as much as possible. This practice is similar to how airplanes overbook their capacity. Like airlines, when the inevitable happens and a guest finds themselves being told the space is fully booked, even though you booked, the hotel kind of owes you one. They will provide accommodation at the nearest equivalent hotel and pay for it all. This is, once again, just like airlines who will pay you to take another flight if they find themselves overbooked with all the intended passengers ready to board. While this is a dangerous game that hotels and airlines play, it's a common practice that likely will never cease to exist. However, suppose you're not particularly phased about things like this. In that case, you're going to luck out and get a night of free accommodation. Some of you might even be happy this happens just so you can get the freebie. Cancellation Policy Workarounds Sometimes plans change in a matter of moments, and going to that hotel you booked ages ago is no longer possible. But now you're faced with a conundrum. You've already paid, so what now? Cancelling means losing your money without enjoying your stay at the hotel you'd picked out months ago. So instead of panicking or giving up on getting your money, allow us to introduce you to a hack to get your money back. Hotels don't want to lose your business, so they're willing to accommodate when you request a change of dates instead of an outright cancellation. So now, the trick is to rebook for a date maybe four to five days ahead of the original. Then, a day or two later, call them again and simply cancel inside the window of cancellation to get your money back. It's deceptive, sure, but it works. Some hotels have gotten wiser and have noticed this trend, but many haven't. It's a situation where trying is better than nothing. How will you ever know if it works if you don't at least try? Background checks optional. While the hiring process for hotels is intense, it's sometimes filled with gaps. And one of those gaps is critical background checks. Don't take this as a statement saying that all hotel workers are thieves, but sadly, every batch has a bad apple. Hotels have so many people to get into key positions in order to get the hotel running efficiently. And while they're strict about who they hire, sometimes things just slip through the cracks. When criminal background checks aren't conducted, sometimes people with long histories of theft end up working in a place ripe with easy targets. In some cases, it's not even a matter of timing, but more a business's choice not to run background checks. These criminals can be anyone from the cleaner to the bellboy. 
Don't treat everyone as public enemy number one, but don't forget to be aware of your surroundings and who's inhabiting them. There have been many instances of people complaining about things going missing from their rooms and bags. Some instances have even become headlines and newsworthy stories. So, if you're planning on staying at a hotel, be sure to keep important documents and items securely locked away in a safe, on your person, or back at home. The AMPM Booking Price Did you know that there are different types of pricing throughout the day? Well, not many people are aware of this, and there's a good reason. It's not advertised. If it was, the lobby would be crowded in the evening with everyone fighting for better prices. What actually happens is that morning prices are usually more expensive than evening prices. Why? Because the later it gets and the more rooms that are available, the more a hotel looks to fill it up as much as possible. Sometimes that means offering rooms at discounted prices. Whether or not they reveal that the price is less is unknown, but many hotels abide by this practice. So. If you're looking to save a bit of money, hit the hotel up a bit later in the evening. You can either go there and book or phone in. The price should be slightly cheaper either way. If you are planning on arriving in the evening anyway, from wherever you've come from, then just try your luck at the hotel once you arrive. It goes to say that sometimes you might find yourself without a room, as everything is filled up. But if you do find a room, you've probably saved a healthy amount of money. Worth the risk? Well, let you be the judge of that. Third-party apps are hurting your wallet. If you've ever been price checking for hotels, you know there are a ton of sites available to help make the booking process easier and cheaper. However, their effectiveness is debatable. Sites like Trivago, Expedia, Hotels.com, Booking.com, and more are some of the most popular sites to find the best deals. We all want to save money, so we have more of it to spend on the actual vacation or trip rather than on accommodation. So, saving a few dollars here and there is always the goal, but these third-party sites and apps aren't where you can save the most money. First, you're going to want to check what the cheapest offer available is on one of these sites, but instead of booking through them, get in touch with a hotel, inform them of the offer, and see if they can match or improve on it directly. They pay commission on these bookings, and they're far more eager to get customers the old-fashioned way, with a twist, of course. You'll find more often than not that they don't match the price, but they offer a better one, or the price but with more perks. This is a benefit to the hotel, and most of them will pounce on the opportunity to get that direct sale. The mini bar and ice bucket challenges. Ah, the very thing we love to hate about staying at hotels, the dreaded mini bar. Well, there's a lot of things you probably don't know about the mini bar. For starters, did you know that most of them operate on weight sensors that charge you automatically if you take something off the sensor after a few seconds? Hopefully, it doesn't take you long to make decisions. But this isn't the most important thing to know about mini bars. It's how hotels actually deal with mini bars and the final bill. Let's say you have a wild night out on the town. You come back to your hotel room and that bottle of water or that delectable chocolate bar is calling your name. You can't hear your wallet screaming that you're about to spend $9 on water. You're just thirsty. Now, of course, you could try to Indiana Jones your way out of this by putting something of equal weight on the sensor. Unfortunately, this is a lot more difficult after a night out. So, another thing you can try is, when it comes time for checkout, and you are asked the question, did you enjoy anything from the minibar? Just say, no. It sounds wacky, but hotel staff usually don't dive deeper than that. Instead, to avoid a fight, they take it off the bill. Granted, this isn't a universal hack. Some are stricter than others. But hotels know that sensors can be defective or inaccurate sometimes. Hence, they're willing to look the other way when people claim they didn't touch the minibar. Another thing you should probably know about hotels and drinks is that ice buckets should never be used without a plastic lining. So if you've yet to receive yours, don't use the ice bucket until you do. The reason is simple. You don't know what ice buckets have been subjected to or how clean they are. So before you throw in some ice, get that liner to protect yourself. Freebies are used frequently. Hotels have a toolbox of things to give away in case of an emergency. They don't just hand these out to anyone, it has to be warranted. You hear the word freebies and you're thinking of the mini soaps, shampoos and conditioners, but that's a whole different story. We're talking about things hotels offer when showcasing appreciation or keeping guests happy when something goes wrong. Any hotel staff member is equipped with their own set of tools to brighten the moods of even the most difficult customers. From the doorman to the concierge, they're all prepared. However, receiving these gifts does require that you actually engage with the staff and aren't a completely awful person. The hotel staff understands that sometimes things aren't satisfactory. When there's no room for denying it, the best course of action is slapping on a band-aid in the form of something free. The freebies can be just about anything. Room upgrades, premium amenities, merchandise, special services, massages, spa days, tickets to local events, and more. If this isn't a reminder to be nice to hotel staff in case this becomes viable, we don't know what is. Luxury Hotel Sex Parties 
Ever seen The Hangover? Well, if you remember what the hotel room looked like after a wild night out, don't be surprised by the fact that most hotel rooms have seen a lot of crazy stuff throughout the years. There are a lot of hotels that have been around for decades, and in some instances, centuries. So, they've seen their fair share of shocking scenes. No more apparent than when hotels entertain the ultra-rich. In general, the higher up the price value, the more common it is to be treated like you're less than human. The people who are coming to visit you, famous pop stars and Russian oligarchs, they have a private plane that they get in a private vehicle with all tinted black out windows. Sometimes they have security squads. Beyond the entourage of the rich and famous, sometimes the wild and wealthy take it too far. Instead of a room, they hire out the entire hotel and engage in one giant orgy. For a night or two, they spend what a luxury wedding might cost for the entire hotel to engage in one big swingers orgy. When they leave, they leave behind an absolute hellscape for staff to clean up the next day. He turned it on and I remember we like, we looked down and saw all the stains, we looked to the sides and saw them on the wall. At one point in the bathroom, we looked up and saw them all on the ceiling and we were just like, how, how do you do this? While any guest of any income bracket can be disgusting, the richer the guests, the wilder things might get. Every single room would have a different theme and a safe word posted outside of the door. The one that stands out to me was there's a mermaid themed room. It was actually kind of impressive, the details they went, so it was very like under the sea vibe. There was the Wild West room. There was the straight up BDSM room. One couple we had to talk to while they were naked. They would purposely wait to start having sex until housekeeping wanted to clean the room. They wanted somebody to watch. So yeah, your rooms definitely saw some things. So how did they clean all this up? Hotel cleanliness. A hotel not being as clean as you might think perhaps isn't a total secret, but there are secrets within this known truth. For example, did you know that hotel cleaners are often paid per room cleaned on a given day? What do you think? Well, I think they're cutting corners in order to clean more rooms and make more money. It's not their fault that this is the case, but it's likely the case. Beyond that, many different things can happen to contribute to a less than well sterilized environment. Another hotel room cleanliness thing that slips under the radar has to do with the glassware in your room. If you've even noticed a coffee machine, some mugs and other glasses, you've probably sighed a bit of relief knowing it's so readily available. But have you ever had that first cup in the morning and tasted something funny? You might be tasting Pledge, which some hotels use to get the glasses shinier before a guest uses the room. Not only is that dangerous, but it's also disgusting. So be sure to wash that glass. Hotel rooms in general are just notorious for being filthy in a very secretive way. It looks clean at first, but a closer inspection reveals something that's simply not the case. 